Welcome, lovers and beloveds. Um, I'm already so full from this conference, but I feel like uh, I'm so also so honored to be able to to share my uh, work, my inspiration, my questions with you. Um, so I always knew someplace deep inside me that Judaism was a, a, a path of love. But it seemed so buried. You know, I, I, you know I, my, I would sort of perk up when I heard the Shema saying, you know, um, and you shall love God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your might. And, uh, and that loving the stranger was just something that's repeated over and over again and loving your neighbor as yourself. And I thought, oh, this is the core of it. This is the, this is the, the center of it. And, uh, and yet I didn't know how to do that. I would sort of say, well, how do I do that? And uh, it wasn't until I really discovered the Song of Songs that I realized that it was... Uh, the key. It was uh, something that could could send me onto the, onto a path of uh, of bringing that love at the core of our tradition back to center, um, uh, because it seemed like we got so distracted along the way. So um, so when Rabbi Akiva said two things, and he was such a great sage of his generation that, you know, that from from then on, we all listened to Rabbi Akiva's Torah, and his Torah was the Torah of love, and he knew that the Song of Songs was, was key to our liberation, and the two things that he said that really sent me on my path was, was one, that, uh, that, that he called the Song of Songs the Holy of Holies. He said that all of the writings of Torah are holy, but the Song of Songs is the Holy of Holies. And by that, I think he meant that it needs to be at the core, the Holy of Holies at the, at the center of the Mishkan, the center of the temple. And it that center point determines everything that is that you know that comes out from that center. And if it's not at the center, everything is uh, is kind of skewed. And so when uh, when I you know I, I dove into the Song of Songs, and I realized that it was the alternative story to the story of the Exodus. It was the inner path of liberation through love, through connection, through. Um, the uh, realization of our divinity and our belovedness. And so uh, I was really on that path, and I, you know, I dove into the Song of Songs. I wrote a, a devotional commentary about it. I translated it. I thought, oh, now, finally, I'm going to fix things now. This is really... You know, if everybody realizes that this is the core of our tradition, everything's going to change. And, um, and I wrote that, you know, decades ago, and, and, and I was waiting for that change to happen, and it didn't seem to happen. And I, I had a crash. I had a really deep kind of crash, a disillusionment. And then uh, something happened to me on uh, this past tuba of, I went into my meditation and I was uh, immediately given a 
a, a revelation. And the guide, my guide said to me, you know, you Jews, you, you read the Torah every, every week so that that foundational story gets in you over time. You know, so that, that, that cycle of reading the Torah is such a powerful tool to let, let its Torah sink in so that you can live it. So I want to say one other thing that, 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 that Rabbi Akiva said was, had the Torah not been given, we could live our lives by the Song of Songs. And that became my main question, is how do I do that? How might I live my life by the Song of Songs? And what the guide said to me is that, yes, you read the Torah every week so that you can live it, because it lives inside you. And then at some point, our ancestors had the wisdom to add to our weekly readings the Haftorah, because they realized that the voice of the prophets was also an important voice, you know, to to balance, to, to have a conversation between Torah and Haftorah. And so they added that so that every week we would read a certain thing. And so the guide said to me, you're never going to get the Torah of love inside you unless you do the same thing with the Song of Songs, unless you read it every week, unless you immerse in it and and live it. And so, um, and so what I did, I said, oh, the... Um, there are 117 verses in the Song of Songs. There are 54 parshiot. I divided it up, and I said, I'm going to take an entire year, just like we read Torah, I'm going to take an entire year to read the Song of Songs. And, uh, and not only read it, but immerse myself in it just a little bit at a time. So I want to say that, that there was a few ohalas back uh, when Art Green, Rabbi Art Green, was teaching at Ohala. And, uh, you know, most of the wonderful things that happened at Ohala happened in the lobby, uh, in the <laughs> times milling around. And I overheard a conversation that, um, that Art Green was having with someone. And he said to them, well, I'm a Shir Hashirim Jew. And I, and I immediately, I perked up and I, I sort of ran to him and I said, I am too, I am too. <laughs> you know, and I, I was so shocked to hear him say that that I didn't even really ask him what he meant by it. But I, I feel like we 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 are living that. What does it mean to be a Shir Hashirim Jew? And uh, you know, I, I contacted him again at, when I started this project of love at the center, and he said, Well, read my um, read my book. Uh, there's a chapter on Judaism as a, as a path of love. And uh, I just want to read one thing from, his, from that book. He says, To stand in God's presence is to live a life shaped by love. It requires an open heart, one that is able to receive the love of God that pours into, into us in each moment of our existence, and one that knows how to take in that blessing, that gift of love, and reshape it into a love for those around us, both within the human community and extending to the full fellowship of God's creatures amid whom his presence dwells. There is no response to the love of God other than that of sharing it, acting with love towards God's creation. So I felt like that was inspired by the Song of Songs, that... Uh, that immersion, and I decided each week to immerse myself in the text, to study, to find a little piece to chant, and the practice of chant being something a way of taking Torah into my body, letting it live there through melody and rhythm, uh, uh, really embodying that text. And then I decided that I wanted to add a uh, something to it. I, w I went to my local labyrinth and I asked a question. I said, how do I step on to the path of love? And uh, the answer that I received was another question. And the question was, can you bring love to everything that you do? And I loved the tone of the question because it wasn't saying, you know, do this. It was saying, oh, here's something, here's a question. That's a curious.
can you do this? Can you bring love to everyone, everything you do? So I came home, I told my husband Rachmiel, and he immediately put sticky notes around the house with that question on it. And <laughs> so that we could remember the question. And I realized how important it is just to live with a question, not to look for an answer, but to live with the question. So each part, each parsha of Shir Hashirim also holds a question. Um, can I, you know, can I do this? Can I live by it? And that was the most important thing is not learning it, but living, living it. So I thought um, that we could um, do a few uh, practices from Love at the Center. The purpose of Love at the Center is to let the power of Shir Shirim bring us back to our own centers where we are we are love. And uh, the Shir Shirim is not, um, it's not an easy text. It's not a sentimental text. It's not a romantic text. It's a text of transformation. Uh, so the first, uh, so you ready to just take a little journey here? We'll do, I just picked four, um, four different practices from the Love at the Center practices to see as, as representative of each week. And the one that just happens to be this week's practice is one that says, uh, I call it tr the true face. It says, um, it says, let me see who you really are. Let me hear your voice, for your voice is sweet and your face is radiant. And so I realized in, in taking this text inside me is that my normal way of being in the world is that uh, I usually see what I expect to see or hear what I expect to hear because I'm always busy trying to figure out how this world is going to, you know, how to use the world to protect ourselves from it, how to stay safe and how to identify what's a threat and what's an ally. And so my mind is always busy, you know, kind of, comparing and categorizing and defining and setting up what my next step is going to be. But when those thoughts quiet down and, uh, and are not then the source of the, the focus of my attention, suddenly the world appears and it is usually much more bright and beautiful and radiant than anything we could have imagined. And, uh, and then we get to... Um, to really open to it and that God is speaking to us and showing us all the time, but only if we quiet that voice that is always chattering about it. So, um, so let's do this, take these words, take them inside as a prayer that allows our, um, the stillness to return that allows a spaciousness to have a direct encounter of God through this world. Kick 
Question, question to live with, a question for contemplations. Can I quiet my mind's interpretation of the world before me so that I might encounter my world directly without commentary, comparison, analysis, definition, or judgment? Can I become receptive to the beauty before me as the face of God. So imagine
imagine living, living with the question, allowing that question to, to sit inside us, um, letting it guide us on a, on a path. And the Song of Songs has some kind of medicine in it to awaken, awaken love. Uh, awaken the kind of love that is transformative. And as I've been working these last few months um, with the text, with these, uh, I have a couple of love immersion groups and other groups are forming around the country of people who are working with one little piece at a time, working through it. And... Um, and it takes it takes a, a lot to get it inside us. It takes a lot. And I asked some people like, well, how is it affecting your life? And what's amazing is, you know, the things that people are saying to me is like, oh, it's bringing me into my body. Oh, it's opening me to pleasure. Oh, it's opening my senses. Oh, it's showing me where I'm blocked. You know, that's the... The text itself has a has a, a power, but only if we take it out of our heads and bring it into to living it. And um, so it, it's been uh, so far an amazing amazing journey. Um, and I'll, you know I'm gonna have a little time for for questions to come. I'm saying like, and I I I realized as this was coming through me that this was. My big vision is like that, you know, that, that that we all do this, that we bring love to the center, and that this text represents the core of our tradition, and it needs to come back and not just be something we, you know, read once in a while, um, uh, because there's depth, there's a depth to it. Uh, so, um, so I picked another phrase for you that is from chapter three, a little bit uh, further on, and it gives us an image. It says, uh, each with a sword on his thigh against the terror of night. And I, I feel like um, this past week has been so much of the terror of night rising. And uh, to understand then what does the Song of Songs bring to us to meet that terror and what i you know what i wrote was that i hold the sword of truth close in the moments i may need to cut through the illusions of separateness finitude isolation in the moments and i've had a few of these moments this week when i am paralyzed by the terror of night the terror of not seeing a way forward I need to find my strength, my vision, my powerful imagination, and my courage. The, then I can relax my heart, release my fears, and enter this night with a confident song. This is what it means to be a spiritual warrior. And the question that I, of, for contemplation during that week will be, can I find the fierce love, my fierce love, and wield the sword of truth in protection of all that I cherish. So I want to put that question out as the kavanah for the practice that we'll do. Um, and, uh, and what we have uh, is a life where sometimes um, that terror of night uh, paralyzes us. And the Song of Songs gives us the true power to cut through it, to, uh, to find um, the power that is not power over, but it is the power that moves in the world between us. Um, so I invite you to find that sword of truth and let it sing out. Ish. Herbo alir aicho, ish herbo alir aicho, ish herbo alir aicho. 
say it takes a while for a Torah to get inside you and we do it through immersion repetition play exploration so the the um, our our ancestors saw the song of songs and read it as a midrash on the book of Exodus as the deeper story of how we 
how liberation happens. When God takes us out of Egypt, it's for one reason alone, to be, to be your God, to be in relationship. And that relationship with the, of, um, is, um, that's the treasure. That's the place we live from. The relationship with the great mystery, the sense of beloved that is, that is inside us. So this um, this plan of sort of saying let's take Shira Shireem into the into the center. I would love if there are um, questions that arise for you of what that would mean and what it feels like. I, you know, I'm I, I love being in conversation with you about it. For me, it's uh, an experiment, um, and what I've been told is that uh, that I can't you can't even you, you know you, this. It's going to take at least three years to even taste the Song of Songs, of three years of this immersion, of this, of these, of this practice. Um, but taking it um, really, really deep inside through that repetition and spending a week, you know, the way that we would spend a week with a parsha, to st- spend it with just a couple lines from the Song of Songs is going to help us to let it live inside us and uh you know i was uh, i was feeling like so like messianic in the way of saying like oh this is what the world needs i can see how it transforms my life Um, i want this for the world Um, i came uh, you know and uh, at moments when i uh, have been discouraged uh, I, I found this quote by uh, Rumi, and he said, start a huge foolish project, like Noah. It makes absolutely no difference what people think of you. <laughs> and I printed that out and put it up above my computer um, to remind myself that this is a huge foolish project, and it makes no difference what anybody thinks of me. But I. I was really touched by what uh, Adam said in the last panel, that he said, uh, you know, Jewish renewal needs to move from R&D to uh, kind of delivering the medicine. And uh, I don't know, I don't know how to do that, but it's like that's, you know, that it it wants to move through all of us uh, and, and, and go out into the world because the world needs it. So um, um, let's do one more practice and then uh, uh, open up to, to any questions that anybody has. And um, the practice that I want to do is, uh, um, you know, I, I, when I encounter a phrase from the Song of Songs, I, you know, I study it, I read all the commentaries, I look up every word, and then I begin to play with it and, uh, and enter into its mystery. And these words that says, um, on his wedding day, the day of his heart's rejoicing. And as I began to encounter those words, I heard a voice that said, that's today. That's today. <laughs> uh, that every day is the wedding day. Um, so um, we are we are called to come out from our blindness and complacency to gaze upon King Solomon, who represents the truth of our wholeness, who wears the crown that his mother, the Shekhinah, the divine eminence, gives him on this day that celebrates the marriage of all duality. This is the day of our heart's rejoicing, the day that when we see through the illusions of separation and the truth of unity is made known. Oh, that's today, <laughs> and that's the you know that's the kind of a waking up I have to keep doing over and over again to say yes, that you know that place of unity consciousness is being given to us today, that what we're faced with in our minds in the world is duality consciousness that is always separating one from another and the and the unity consciousness that we need to enter into is really uh and and celebrate um 
So I always remember that, you know, when we crossed the sea, we didn't start trudging into the wilderness right away. We had a celebration, and that celebration is not optional. It is what gives us the, the, the strength, the joy, to traverse the wilderness. And I feel like that, that each day there needs to be a moment of crossing and a moment of, you know, that, of celebrating uh, the flash of unity that we are each uh, given through the beauty of the world. So, um, so let's, let's, let's do this practice and come into the, 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 the question for contemplation that I lay on the altar of this chant is, can I rejoice in this day with all its possibilities for connection with the one? Can I rejoice in this day? And that rejoicing is going to give me the strength and the inspiration um, to know how to live it, to live that sense of unity. So let's, let's try this practice. Not 
for connection with the one. So I um, wanted to, to, to take, a, take some time to, to get your response or your questions. I, you know, I really see this as a long-term project of, of really reclaiming Shir Shirim and bring it into you know, to into our the center of our tradition, because everything else changes when we when we do that. Everything else reads differently, and to, uh, to continually ask the question as we uh, as we study a text, as we as we encounter it, is oh, and now how do I live this? You know, and often um, that question is also. What is my resistance to it, and how do I meet that resistance? Uh, because I, you know, for me, it's a, it's a, it's a trend, it's transformative if I take it, if I take it in. So, you know, I'm thinking that if anybody wanted to, we could just un, if you had a question or a comment, to un, to unmute, and uh, and just start talking and then you're about this I should have put I should have put like a plant in the audience here too <laughs> as I said questions are the that's my mo that I love the, I love the questions yeah yeah a penny yeah if you were chanting the last chant I had my eyes closed and a message came into me that love dries up the flood of negativity in your heart. Yeah. There's a flood of negativity could drown you and love will dry it up. Yeah. Thank you for that. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Leah. And um, Rob Benny. Yeah. Uh, the first thing that I want to say is is really thank you for what you are doing. I will say that your weekly emails have become a very a central part of my own uh, spiritual practice. It's simple and revolutionary. It feels revolutionary. It seems like we're talking about the vaccine uh, uh, to the world uh, in the plenary, and I feel like uh, you've given us uh, the, the, the study. Uh, a question that I have, which is more maybe uh, you'll tell me if it's appropriate or not, is that um, since I started, I, I missed like the first chapter and change of your weekly pieces. Is it better to dwell in the present and continue to be, and I'll tell you the weekly thing, uh, every day a word comes from it, a different word, something that I don't expect that is not commanded by me, but rather it's the word is guided to me. So should I should I try to do past homework or should I go with the daily? <laughs> well, I think stay where you are. You're gonna get you're gonna get to it. But it's all on it's all on my website. Uh, the, it's all all of them are on the website. 
And so the past you, ones are there yeah, too. Yeah, all oh. of them are. If you look at the library in my website, it, it'll every and it's connected. Each each part is connected to a parsha. So there's 54 parshiot, and there's 54 little thing. And I'm I'm working at creating. You know, I mean, the chant is part is part of it. It's a way to immerse. But even if you don't chant, to take that phrase and live it for a week to see where does it live in you, where does it move you, what what is are, what are its implications for your life? How do I live? How do you live it? That's the main the main thing. Anybody? Anybody else? I mean, I don't know how this is going to catch on with more, but I, more, more, more people, and it's not maybe my business to know, but I, it feels like the the people I'm working with it is having it, it is moving us from the inside. It's changing us, and uh, and it's you know the path of love um, is the most rigorous path we can take, because when we're on the path of love, we meet. Um, all of the places of blockage, of resistance, um, and we have to do the healing work in order to allow that that flow to happen. Um, there's this, um, you know, and I, I think that as we are, you know, in in the world doing the, the tikkun olam, or the healing of the world, um, if love is not at the center of our actions, um, w- you know, it, we're, we're bringing toxicity, we're bringing fear, we're, we're, you know, we, um, and, and as that other practice showed, this is, love can be a fierce and powerful force. Um, I want to bring this one quote from uh, Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr., and he said, we've got to get this thing right. What is re- needed is a realization that power without love is reckless and abusive, and love without power is sentimental and anemic. Power at its best is love implementing the demands of justice, and justice at its best is power correcting everything that stands against love. So I, I'm just in, inspired by that, of, and and what I, what I um, sort of the way that that the Song of Songs is sometimes relegated in our tradition is something, sort of like as a as a as a sweet like romantic romantic thing, and it's not. It is um, it is meant to transform us from our very core. But only if we get it inside us, only if we live it and ask those hard questions. Um, so I know I want to do one more practice, but any, oh, Bert, yeah. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm really impressed with, uh, with this work you're doing. And I see that because I I am a disciple of the Baal Shem Tov, and I see how this connects so deeply to uh, to the teachings of the Baal Shem Tov. But I'm also a political activist, and. Um, I'm really concerned with what's going on in our country, the divisions between right and left, between the wealthy and the poor. And I am especially concerned about the Middle East and about the the whole issue of Israel and the Palestinians. Uh, I've been an activist around that particular issue uh, since the 1970s. And I'm, I'm wondering if you could address how you would bring the path of love into dealing with those kinds of issues. 
I think it, you know, I think each of us is going to do it differently, and I respect that. I, but I think that what all of us have in common is that um, that it's easy to go to the place of, of reactivity. And unless we have a, a, a strong, deep spiritual practice that keeps us connected to the truth of this oneness and this, you know, core value of of, of, of love and unity, unless we are practice it every day, we are all vulnerable to go to those places of fear and reactivity. And if whatever I bring to the world is coming from the, those places of fear and reactivity, um, it's, it's not going to work. Uh, and, and so what I want to do in my practice is, is really work on where I'm coming from and build the, this center of love in me so that whatever comes out of, out, out of me, whatever moves in my mind um, is, is, is not conditioned by that fear or reactivity, is not, you know, a victim of it. Um, so it's building an inner reality of love because when I do that, I'm going to face the outside world in a different way. And that's 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 what I trust. I trust that path. I'm not there yet, but I trust that that's the that's the path I need to be on, and that my tradition gives me this incredible tool of building that 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 power inside me to um, to to with, to withstand those forces of negativity that are gonna that are gonna make me reactive. It, um, so uh, I, I, hope, I hope that kind of address, addresses it. I feel like oh, when, I'm, when I'm in it, oh, I say, I need this, you know, I really need this in order to face the world. And when I, when I, when I lose it, I come back to it. And if I put it in myself, just like the, the story of the Exodus, we plant that inside us, that foundational story of moving from from narrow places into the expanded consciousness. We place that momentum, that story in us so that it can direct us in our lives. So the Song of Songs is even the deeper story, the inner story of love that we need to put inside us so that we can then, that our lives can be an expression of that. Yeah. So, so um, let's let's do uh, one more practice, and um, and I wanted I picked this practice because I really um, it it involves the the companions on the path of love, and there are these um, ones in the Song of Songs, these characters in the Song of Songs called the Daughters of Jerusalem, and they represent a kind of a spiritual companionship. Um, witnesses on the path of love that are absolutely essential. Uh, I say that um, with this practice, um, and the pra the pra you know the, the words say, if you find my beloved, you must tell him that I am in the fever of love. This practice, um, we connect with our companions on the path of love, asking for their understanding, support, reality checks anchoring as we fall in love. Being in love requires us to surrender deeply. Being in love feels like a kind of madness in that it sometimes requires me to ignore the outer shape of things in order to embrace the inner essence. It tells me, and maybe this is what you were concerned about, Bert. <laughs> this is, tells me that all is well, even in the midst of apparent disaster. Living from that inner essence feels risky. I don't want to do it alone. That's why I'm always reaching out to kindred souls, to you, so that we can affirm each other's glimpses, sharing our fragile impressions of the fragrance that love imbues. When I, and then when I, when I chant those, those words, um, Shecholat Hava'ani, I am swooning, languorous, dreamy, and I enter into the state of being in love. 
knowing that my companions are there for me um, without judgment allows me to surrender even further. And so that's the risk I take, the risk of falling in love, because I want to get to the deepest, deepest truth. I don't want to stay on the surface. And I think when I fall in love, I reach that place that is so connected to the oneness that then I can, um, that, 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 that anchor holds even when I'm out in the world doing what needs to be done. That's my, that's my, uh, my, my faith. So, um, so let's chant this and we can use this chant also to, to connect with each other as the, as the daughters of the sons of Jerusalem and to give each other permission to really do that inner step of surrendering uh, to the inner, to the inner reality. In Tinsu Dodi Matagi Dolo Shepholat Ahava Ani In Tinsu Dodi Matagi
Um, so, because we're asking each other this question, you know. And in a way, when I want to go to the deepest place of surrender to love inside me, I want to know that you're there for me. I, you know, I want to be there for you to be able to take that step because it because it's risky and it's risky to step into this world without defenses and cynicism it's risky to step into this world a open-hearted presence and unless we have e each other i don't think we can do it yeah so just take a moment and um we'll look into these uh these faces here to give your uh, your loyalty, your pledge, your solidarity to say, yes, we can go there. We can go there together. And we'll say it one more time. We can fall in love. In Tinsa O Wetoldi Matagi Dolo place of being sick with love it feels like that's the true health that's the true wholeness and uh, when I when I leave it I'm, I'm leaving that wholeness I'm only being um, a piece of myself when I touch that wholeness only by surrendering to the force to the power of of, of love to the truth of unity and um, I am so um, honored to be on this path with you. I in invite you to just to, to stay in touch. Um, there's about 600 people who have signed up to receive these uh, the, the mailings that I sent out. And uh, and then you know uh, to you know I have these love immersion groups, and you know it's just a, a whole. Uh, you know, something growing. It's part of what's growing in the world, you know, so uh, that I want to be part of. And it, uh, and it, all that negativity in the world, this is, this is, this is the light that meets it. And it's, to me, it's the, it's um, the only path I can travel that is not going to destroy me, <laughs> really, in meeting that negativity in the world. It's the, the path that, can, that connects me, connects us um, in the face of all of it. So I think that's what, um, that's what I got today. So good to be with you on this path.